and it's narrated by renowned scholars. And it's one that causes the non-Shi'i a problem when it comes to the incident of the dawn. That the non-Shi'i has to take all the principles of jurisprudence and apply them to history and say, well, this narrator's weak, this narrator's weak. Why? Because it puts Abu Bakr in a difficult position. Because if Tabari and Tabarani and others narrate that Abu Bakr talks about his regrets at the end of his life. In this world, all of us at one stage, when we go towards our deathbed, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us the good health, what may come across our minds? Certain things we regret in our life. Do you agree? The reality is that Abu Bakr regretting certain things, we are not masoom sitting here that we're not going to regret certain things. At the end of the day, every human being comes to their deathbed and there may be certain things that sadden them or upset them or they regret. And you say, Ya laytani qaddamtu li hayati. I wish I had given more towards my life. Or you may turn around and say that I reflect on this moment and I could have done things a bit different. The hadith discusses Abu Bakr, the first Khalifa, and his regrets. He says, there are certain things which I did, which I wish I never. And there are certain things I never did, which I wish I did. And there are three questions. And he mentions three on each, by the way. There are three things which I did. Did which I wish I never. And there are three things which I didn't do, which I wish I did. And there are three things which I wish I asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Now this hadith, I as a Shi'i, I'm not saying I have to take it, but look at how it reflects that in the Muslim community, there was definitely a question mark about Abu Bakr and Umar and Fatima through this one hadith. What is it? Abu Bakr says there were three things which I, he says nothing saddened me except three things which I wish I didn't do but I did. The first of them, let's look at the three. I'll give them in my own order for the sake of the lecture. The first of them is that I killed Fuja' al-Sulami. Yes, and Fuja' al-Sulami was one of the apostates in the Ridda Wars. He says that my regret was that I burnt him. That person, you know this Ridda Wars, after the Prophet died, they said people had left Islam, Murtad, and they went and killed people. And these people, some of them were claiming they were prophets, but Malik bin Nuwayra believed in Ali ibn Abi Talib, therefore he had to be killed as well. But anyway, you found that he says, I wish that I didn't burn Al-Fuja'a-Sulami, but rather that I had either killed him or that I had kept, released. First thing, three things which I regret that I did them and I wish I hadn't. Second of them is that becoming Khalifa. I wish I had given it to Omar or Abu Ubaidah, who was the Prophet can't give it and you're now giving it. Wallah, I don't understand. The man who came with the religion cannot give the leadership. But Abu Bakr and Umar, wallah, I don't understand. Besides, why do we have to smile? You found that, he says, that the second thing which I regret, which I did and I wish I hadn't, was what? Was that I took the caliphate. Instead, I should have given it to Umar or Abu Ubaidah. And this is not Shi'i, this is non-Shi'i. I'm showing you how it exists. And that I became a minister for them. Second. Third. What is it Abu Bakr? The third thing. That you wish you hadn't done. But you did. He said invade the house of Fatima. <clears throat> now. I may have somebody out there listening saying. Wallah this narrator is bad. But you can defend all you want. It doesn't matter. For me. All it reflects is that there was a belief that existed there. Call it forgery, call it myth, call it what you want. We'll look at Bukhari tomorrow where he makes it clear who's angry with who. <coughs> but suffice, there are three things. The first, with who? Fujah as The second is what? Taking the caliphate. The third, I wish I didn't invade or I hadn't invaded the house of Fatima. The door of Fatima, the house of Fatima. Even if what was in there was ready for war. <clears throat> because the whole idea was, you guys probably have weapons in there, so there shouldn't be an issue entering. Yeah, you have to give bay'ah. 
to the leader of your time, who are the prophet people who didn't give bay'ah to him, didn't go around killing them. But you have to go around to people's houses and put them under threat if they don't give bay'ah to you. Anyway, so he says. Then he says there are three things which I 